The CIA, LSD, brainwashing, mysterious deaths, and a creepy mansion called Ravenscrog. Are these the half-baked ideas of a pulpy sci-fi thriller? Well, they very well could be. But what if I told you that this was also the very true story of what happens when scientists disregard the ethics of research and fundamentally worsen the lives of innocent patients who are seeking help? This is the story of MK Ultra. Where? Ravenscrog, better known as the Allen Memorial Institute, which sits atop a scenic mountain in the Canadian city of Montreal. The manor was previously owned by one Sir Hugh Allen, a shipping magnet and, at the time, one of the most richest men in the world. The mansion was built in the rural countryside and designed in an homage to Italian Renaissance architecture. Allen could be spotted peering out onto the St. Lawrence River with his big brass telescope, staring out over those arriving by boat. After his death, the house was donated to the Royal Victoria Hospital, and it is here where things get a bit scary. South of the border, the CIA had become increasingly interested in the use of brainwashing techniques, anticipating that the communists had already began their own research into mind control. The CIA backed the chemist Sidney Gottlieb, who was in charge of developing a sort of mind control drug that could be used against American enemies. Gottlieb had a particular theory for how one would go about doing this. As the journalist Stephen Kinzer writes, Gottlieb wanted to create a way to seize control of people's minds, and he realized it was a two-part process. First, you had to blast away the existing mind. Second, you had to find a way to insert a new mind into that resulting void. We didn't get too far on number two, but he did a lot of work on number one. To carry this out, Gottlieb had the CIA buy the entire world's supply of LSD and promptly began disseminating it in hospitals, clinics, and many other institutions. He would then have made up organizations seemingly detached from the CIA encourage researchers with huge research grants to carry out his projects. One such project, Project 68, would be carried out in the Allen Memorial Institute under the psychiatrist Dr. Donald Ewing Cameron, who was provided with more than what would amount to $4 million in today's money. Project 68 was one of the most infamous and controversial of all of the projects, characterized by Cameron's theory of psychic driving and depatterning. Depatterning would involve the use of electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, in combination with very high doses of psychedelic drugs in order to break down the subject's personality. Cameron, the ever-diligent scientist, would continue to administer the electric shocks regardless of whether the patient was in pain or suffering from convulsive fits. Then, after the individual's brain was fried, they would be subjected to hundreds of thousands of repetitions of the same audio message continuously looped. And who were these unfortunate test subjects? Cameron recruited 53 individuals in Montreal who had all come to receive treatment for various psychological ailments, somatic complaints, sleep issues, a depressed mood. Entrusting the good Dr. Cameron with their health and well-being, they would be subjected to his torturous psychic driving experiments and tossed aside, forever afflicted with cognitive impairment. As the son of one of the patients recalls, the experiments left his father a human guinea pig, a poor, pathetic man with no memory, no life. He lost his business, he lost everything. His son continues, in grave detail, I remember one of his first visits home from the hospital. He didn't talk much, and when he did talk, it made no sense. When he wasn't sleeping, he was drowsy. He asked us things about his parents, even though they'd been dead for years. The outcomes for many MK Ultra participants remain unknown, but for those subjected to psychic driving, the consequences were devastating. These individuals endured lifelong impairments, unaware that they were research subjects or that the procedures carried serious permanent risks. The MK Ultra project underscores the essential need for ethical research standards today. 
particularly the importance of informed consent and transparent communication of potential harms. It serves as a stark reminder that respect for autonomy and participant safety must remain fundamental in all research endeavors. Informed consent is a fundamental ethical principle that should govern all forms of research. It's interesting that Cameron was invited to the Nuremberg trials to give a psychiatric evaluation to Rudolf Hess, a major war criminal. You would think he had some familiarity with the sort of banality of evil that can emerge from research that is largely unguided by ethics or concerns for human rights. Cameron, perhaps conveniently, died while hiking in the mountains due to a heart attack in 1967. Sadly, many of his victims and families are still searching for answers. In 2017, the Canadian government placed a gag order on an out-of-court settlement for victims of the Allen Memorial. As Alan Stein, who has represented numerous victims who were once patients of Cameron States, the government of Canada should recognize its legal responsibility, which it has never done. We can only hope that one day there will be justice for those affected by the negligence and dehumanizing consequences of MKUltra.